Greetings, I'm Brian Posey, a long-term Tech Target contributor, and today I want to show you an exciting feature that's coming in Windows Server 8, the ability to boot a machine from an iSCSI target. So how does iSCSI booting work? Well, if you're familiar with Windows Server 2008, you know that it comes with an iSCSI initiator, but there isn't an iSCSI target component. For that, you need to download an optional component or use Windows Storage Server. But all this has changed in Windows Server 8. Now, we've got this component within Server Manager. I've got the file services installed. And you'll notice we've got this component, the iSCSI Virtual Disk. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice that we have the ability to create iSCSI Virtual Disks or iSCSI Targets. Actually, we can do both at the same time through a single wizard. But the point being that now it's possible to create an iSCSI Target directly through Windows Server 8. So I'm just going to quickly walk you through this process. I'm going to go ahead and click the Launch the New Virtual Disk Wizard to create a virtual disk link. And this is going to open up the new iSCSI Virtual Disk Wizard. So the first thing that we have to do is pick a virtual disk location. We've got all these volumes that were previously set up. I'm just going to pick one and click Next. Now we assign a name for our virtual disk, simple enough. I'll just call this My Disk. Click Next. Virtual Disk Size. We've got 49 gig to work with. I'm just going to create a 5 gig disk. Okay, so now it asks me if I want to assign my new iSCSI virtual disk to an existing iSCSI target, which I don't have any, or if I want to create a new iSCSI target, which I do. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is selected and click Next. And my target name is actually already filled in, not because this is done automatically, but just because I was playing around with it earlier and the name stuck. So I'm going to click Next. Now it's going to ask me for access servers. I'm going to click Add to specify the iSCSI initiators that will access the iSCSI virtual disk. So I'm just going to click Add, and I'm going to enter a value for the selected type. We'll enter an IQN, and I'm just going to go with something really generic here. IQN.1991-05.com dash dot Microsoft. OK and I'm going to click Next and I get an authentication screen that allows me to enable CHAP or reverse CHAP if I want to. I'm not going to worry about that for this particular demo. I'm just going to click Next. Here we see a summary of the options that we've chosen and I'm going to click Commit and the wizard goes through and executes the job and everything's successful. So I'm going to close this out and you can see that here's our new iSCSI virtual disk. Now earlier I mentioned that there were two different components at work to make booting from iSCSI possible. The first one is iSCSI targets and iSCSI virtual disks, but the second one, believe it or not, is DHCP. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the server manager, and I'm going to switch over to the DHCP console, which I've already got open, and I want to show you something. Now if you look beneath IPv4, you'll notice that I've got a scope set up here, 10.10.1.10 and I called this boot. Now the reason for this is that this scope is going to be used for computers that are booting to the network. Um, that is computers that don't already have a local volume configured for booting and they need to boot to the network because that's the only place they can boot to. But what's really interesting here is take a look at what I've got underneath of server options. Here I have a root path and it's this is actually pointing to iSCSI. We've got the IP address and if I go over we've actually got the IQN. So here we have DHCP actually participating in directing clients to an iSCSI boot. Now as much as I would like to be able to show you all of this in action, unfortunately iSCSI booting just isn't something that I can really demo through a video. But anyway, I wanted to at least show you the components that are involved and some of what Microsoft is working on for iSCSI booting in Windows Server 8. So with that, thank you for watching.